beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This sermon will be a little bit different today, because only part of it will be a sermon. The rest of it will be a demonstration of what the church is today. So first and foremost, I'd like to invite Don and Ann Robitaille forward. Anna and Don, you've been with us since um, coming with us since February. We've been spending time together learning about the Christian faith. Now, you already know the Christian faith, but learning about some of our Lutheran distinctives, and you've expressed a desire to join this church. So, on the basis of that, beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, answer, I do. Do you renounce the devil in all his works, in all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, Word and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church, and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Do you desire to be a member of this congregation? Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts that God has given you? Upon this your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation, will please stand. Stay, stay this way. You're good. Not yet. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your son and daughter, to the knowledge of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to turn and face the congregation as we welcome Don and Ann Robitaille to membership. Thank you. I'd like to give you uh, one thing, and this is something we give our new members. Um, a gift from a long-defunct life insurance company, the Aid Association for Lutherans. I think it died before I was born. Um, this is something I know you've moved into a house fairly recently here, and so this is something for your house that you might have. Thank you. We are so glad to have you. I've enjoyed working with you um, in, um, in, in, in my office when we've met, and I know that the congregation has loved having you with us. So thank you for being here. What a great day for you to come and officially join this church on the birthday of the church on Pentecost Sunday. So welcome to St. Paul, and we're so glad you're here. Congratulations. Let's give them a hand as they return to their seat. Let's give God the glory. The congregation may be seated as that was part one of what the church looks like today. 
In part two, we'd like to invite our Sunday school teacher and students, some of whom are kind of shy right now, to come on forward as they're going to give a presentation on what they've learned this year. Now, these are only some of our Sunday school students. You notice that we're missing one of our families who have the stomach flu today. <laughs> so that's four of our kids who are down today. But we're glad for those who are here. And because we've got cameras going, I'd like to y'all to like come on just in front of here. Um, so there you go. Great. Do you need to hold anything? Um, or do we have enough for everyone? Everybody has something. Everyone has something. Great. So we decided as a group, we really were into like singing and dancing, but we did want to show what we've learned in a different kind of way. So they've made posters um, highlighting some of the things that they found enjoyable or that they've learned during Sunday school this year. So does anybody want to start? Okay, well, okay. So I'll start. Um, which one should I do? Top ten. Okay, so here are some Sunday school highlights of this year. Um, we had uh, 14 students enrolled. Um, there were nine students who came regularly. Uh, we did 32 lessons, four service projects. We memorized the Ten Commandments in the Lord's Prayer. Um, most of them memorized and some worked toward learning the books of the Bible. Um, we visited St. Columban's and the Chautauqua Nursing and Rehab Center. We listened to and sang-ish Sunday school songs, but you know, at least we got them in our brain. Um, and, and then another thing that really wasn't a Sunday school lesson, but we talked about quite a bit, was um, learning from Mr. Bowles, from Dan Bowles, in his example, because we just don't want to forget how much he did for our church, and um, it, it, it um, really resonated with a lot of us. And, and, we had great attendance from our Sunday school at his funeral. So, somebody else want to go? I'll go. Okay. I did mine on distributing the service projects. So this year, our Sunday school class made crafts and service projects. When we finished them, when we finished them, we handed them out at the county home in St. Columbus. I enjoyed this because we were able to see the other members who were not able to come to church. And we will hang these in the fellowship hall afterwards, too, if you want a closer look. Marley wants some help, babe? Okay, so this is Marley. Xander? Okay, she's going to read her brothers first. I have no idea what it is. Okay. Doing crafts. Doing crafts and talking about... Feelings. Oh, feelings. Talking about our feelings. Feelings. Yeah, talking about our feelings. Okay, I'm going to draw. I know. <laughs> this was his. What did he draw? Something that came from his art. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this is Marley's. So, what was your favorite part? Painting rocks because it was fun. The videos because they were funny. And do you plan on coming back this fall? Uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> oh, the answer is yes, of course. I don't know. <laughs> okay, go ahead, A. Uh, I don't have like a main part of my favorite thing, but I liked being able to learn more about God through Sunday school and my confirmation. Um, my favorite part of Sunday school was the service projects where we painted rocks. Painting rocks is my favorite because I like to paint them rocks. And then I made a, a top 10 of our Sunday school lessons this year. 10 was Adam and Eve. 9, Noah's Ark. 8, The Burning Bush. 7 was Palm Sunday. Um, 6, Transfiguration. 5, Joseph and his coat of many colors. 4, The Parting of the Red Sea. 3, The Wise Men Visit Jesus. 2, The Good Shepherd. And our, our top favorite was Baby Moses. So, thank you for supporting the Sunday School. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. I, um, I am unfortunately always busy when y'all are in your class because I'm teaching the adult class. 
but it means a lot that you're able to share this today. And so what you've seen today is the church, what the church looks like today. What you heard in your reading was what the church looked like nearly 2,000 years ago. Small, huddled in an upper room, alone, afraid. But then in one moment all that changed when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, upon those apostles, and they were able to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the assembled masses in Jerusalem. From that point, the church, which started as small and local and huddled and cloistered and afraid, spread around the entire world until this very day when there is not one nation on the face of this earth where at least one person does not know the saving name of Jesus Christ. Dear saints of God, what you saw today is what the church looks like now. As a result of the Holy Spirit coming upon us, coming upon you in the waters of holy baptism, creating and sustaining faith within you, giving birth to this thing that we call the Christian church, where we have new people coming in, joining our fellowship, where we have young people learning about Jesus. We have me going out and visiting older folks for this week, where we have tomorrow one of our members, Allison, will be giving a kidney to someone in need. The church is living. The church is alive. The church is active in teaching and preaching and reaching out arms with love for our neighbor because God has first loved us. And does the church fall short from time to time? Absolutely. We certainly see that in the news. Local churches in this area that have done some truly terrible things. When we have done wrong, we get on our knees and we beg God for forgiveness. Because where we do wrong most of all is when we aren't out there, when we aren't on the streets, when we aren't on campus, when we aren't in our communities and in our families proclaiming the word of God. You might have found it interesting that our Old Testament lesson today was going back to the Old Testament, the Tower of Babel where God confused the languages of all the people. But on Pentecost, God made it so that his gospel can be understood by all. That's what tongues are, by the way. It's not goo goo gaga baby talk. It's that you can understand the word of God given to the early church in a very special way. But now, here, in this country, most of us know English. And in your families, you all know English. God gives you the tongue. God gives you the words in which to proclaim his saving love, in which to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a Sunday school song. I don't know if you taught it or you learned it today or you learned it this year. It simply says, I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we are the church together. What that means, if I am the church and you are the church, is that you are God's emissaries and God's ambassadors in your families, in your communities, and in this world. You are the means by which, the, you are the means that God sends out with the greater means of grace, with the word of God, with the gospel. You're sent out proclaim the life-changing, life-saving gospel message of Jesus Christ. When you do so, you continue in the spirit of those saints at Pentecost. You continue in the spirit of those first Christians. Because sometimes the temptation is, revert, is to revert to the time of the church before Pentecost. The temptation in this modern day and age is to be like those disciples of old, with all the pressures of the world around us, with all the pressures in our nation, in our culture, to just go back into our upper room, to lock the doors, and to be afraid. God forbid it. 
He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave them the Holy Spirit back then. And he still gives us that same Spirit now. There's a song, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray, lift up my voice, I will sing, I will share. The Holy Spirit has four roles to call you together into the Christian church, to enlighten you with his gifts, to sanctify you, and to keep you in the Christian faith forever. But through you, he works to call others. Pentecost is more than just the coming of the Holy Spirit. It is the birthday of the Christian church. You saw the church alive today. And all around the world, this day, there are people being baptized. There are people confessing their faith in confirmation. There are people hearing the gospel for the first time. We may look around this room and we may, and you may remember back to the old days of this church when there were hundred or so people here every Sunday. And you may think, well, there's no way it'll be like that again. Maybe it won't. But the church is alive. Your church, this church, St. Paul, is alive today because where the Holy Spirit is, there can never be death. That includes you. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. You are alive now and forever. So dear saints of God, on this Pentecost Day, happy birthday, church. You don't look a day over 1,990-some years. You look pretty good for your age because you're alive. Because you are alive forever. Jesus Christ died and rose and ascended. We talked about his ascension last week. But he didn't leave earth alone. He didn't leave you on your own. He promised to send his Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is with you this day keeping you in the faith, emboldening your love, reminding you that you are forgiven now and forever, and bringing you and the entire Christian church to peace with God, a peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.